I have a massive amount of airdrop alpha for you. So let's not waste any time and start off with the biggest piece of news, which is that the layer zero or the zero token checker is now live. So you can go visit this link, check your eligibility and see exactly where you're getting tokens from. And the way that this one works is they've broken it down into layer zero core, which is the fees that you paid to bridge on layer zero protocol that is scaled linearly to get a token allocation. And then there's all of these RFP token allocations that you could get as well for doing things like interacting with specific apps, providing liquidity, bridging specific assets like EtherFi's EETH and a bunch of other things. So between all of this, I qualified with this public wallet for 462.930 tokens. Now I wanna say a quick qualifier, which is that it's actually possible that when we go to claim the tokens, we'll all be getting a slightly more because apparently they're actually still excluding a few additional symbols and doing a couple of final quality control checks so when you go to actually claim your tokens tomorrow june 20th you might actually have a larger allocation than what it originally said so what is my take on this airdrop well overall i would say that honestly i don't have any major complaints i've seen a lot of people suggesting on twitter that given the amount of time and energy people put into farming this one it seemed a little bit stingy but to be honest, overall, between the multiple wallets that I got that qualified for this and given the pre-market trading prices of this, I would say it's going to be a pretty decent airdrop. The funny thing is, and I saw someone posted this on Twitter, was that if you spent the same money that you spent farming layer zero on wormhole instead, you would have gotten an insanely larger amount in terms of the airdrop. But honestly, it is what it is. That's part of the game. And they have held back a pretty sizable allocation of tokens for future seasons to keep people using the bridge and interacting with layer zero protocol. So we will see what happens tomorrow when this thing goes live. And congratulations to everybody that qualified. I got a bunch of messages from people saying that they qualified due to some of my videos and specifically some people are saying that some of the apps they use like gas.zip help them get a massive allocation so here you can see i used gas.zip quite a bit and it got me almost 56 or 55.420 tokens just from that one app all right moving on we've got another big piece of news which is that phase two of the season one eigen token claims are live so this is for people that had staked or restaked ETH with Eigenlayer via complex DeFi protocols like Pendle, for example. But the thing that I want to highlight here is that this is still only prior to March 15th. So the snapshot for this was March 15th. If you go to the Eigenlayer claim page, you'll see that there's a claim phase two button down here. And if you qualify, it will show you how many additional tokens you're getting. So with this wallet, I'm getting 6.5-ish additional tokens. This is valued in the pre-market somewhere around $10, however, so still not a terrible amount. But yeah, this only includes points farmed on complex DeFi protocols like Pendle prior to March 15th. So that was actually a long time ago. You're currently still farming season two if you're still staking with Eigenlayer or doing a bunch of stuff with Pendle. And so, yeah, I think a lot of people actually didn't even start getting into this until around that mid-March point, maybe even late March. And then a lot of people started farming it heavily after the success of season one with Pendle. So probably we'll get a much larger allocation in season two. Another claim that is live is for OX Astra. I spoke about this in one of my previous videos. I still think it's a pretty solid multi airdrop farm because it hits a bunch of different bridges, including this game here as well. And if you farmed it, you'll probably qualify for a portion of this orb guy airdrop. So I already claimed and sold mine. I managed to swap the orb guy tokens that I claimed for about 0.01 ETH, which honestly is not bad and covers a lot of the cost of the transactions that I've been pushing on this bridge to farm this. And again, just as a quick reminder, if you're farming via this bridge, you can hit Orbiter Finance, you hit OX Astra, but then you also hit the pink meme coin, the Orb Guide token, and then all of these different tokenless L2s like Tyco, Scroll you can hit, Arbitrum, Optimism, ZK Sync. Well, that one's done, but yeah. The point is, it's a pretty solid multi-airdrop farm. All right, another token that you can claim right now is for Saga Vault 2. So if you continued staking your Saga tokens, then you can claim your rewards for doing so right here. I actually had unstaked and sold mine as of the last airdrop. All right, let's move now to forward-looking things. For starters, tomorrow, Linea Park LXP is finally going to be dropping. They released a little blog post here about why it's taking so long. They're trying to address the Sybil situation but the TLDR is that we're getting LXP from Linea Park tomorrow, finally. Then the other piece of news on Linea is that one month has passed, so that means we're now in Volt 2 or Month 2 of their airdrop campaign. 
And remember, this one is going for either six months or until they hit three billion in TVO, whichever comes first. But each progressive volt, the amount of points or LSPL that you earn for providing liquidity and doing the different stuff here goes down over time. So volt one was the best one to be in. If you haven't even started farming it yet, there's still a chance to get in because we're still only in volt two. But as we get closer and closer to the end of this, it's going to be progressively less useful and the marginal benefit to adding liquidity is going to be lower and lower. All right, another airdrop farm that I'm pretty bullish on right now is Mitosis. They just opened Epoch 4, which is finally uncapped. All of the previous Epochs had a deposit or a TVL cap after which you couldn't actually get in. So if you had, for some reason, missed all of those previous deposit chances, so you can deposit unlimited on these networks that are highlighted and the grayed out ones, unfortunately, you can't do right now. But honestly, the best targets out of all of these are probably Linea, and then second, I would say Mode, and then Blast, maybe third. Blast third because their airdrop is coming on June 26th, and Mode is still having a second round of their airdrop, even though the Mode token itself is cursed. So yeah, I've got a few ETH in this across a couple of wallets, and I think that this one is probably going to cook. Okay, next up, if you are farming the Tyco mainnet airdrop, they just launched the week two challenge, and you have to complete at least one bridge transaction to Tyco in order to qualify and mint the little faction badge. So you can access those badges here in the faction badge section, and then each week, if you complete the required thing, whatever the challenge is, then you can actually get that badge. But also, the points that you get are different. So this week, they're actually incentivizing bridging, and you get some pretty sizable amounts of points for actually making those bridge transactions. And I do believe that the more you bridge, the more you get. People in my Discord have actively been going through all of the best possible ways to max qualify for this. I personally have not been pushing buttons and ranking up for this because I've been chilling on a beach in Aruba. But if you wanna hop in the Discord and join that conversation, there's tons of strategies on how you can actually max qualify for this. And some things are definitely better than others. Okay, next up for Zeta Markets, the perp decks on Solana, they released this little teaser here for June 20th. So tomorrow, not only are we getting to claim our zero tokens, but we're getting something from Zeta. I'm thinking it's probably going to be the eligibility checker and not the actual token, but we will see what happens with that. And then speaking of the Solana ecosystem, if you are staking Jupe tokens to vote and to earn all those rewards and airdrops, there's some pretty bullish news here from the founder of the Jupiter Exchange. And the TLDR is that they're proposing to basically burn 30% of the supply. And after they posted that, the price jumped up 10% almost instantly. But there's a bunch of other stuff in here. And if you're actually a Jupe holder and staker, I do recommend checking it out and reading it because it is part of the airdrop farming that we're doing here on the channel. But also, since you have to lock your tokens up for 30 days when you stake them, then it probably makes sense to actually understand what's going on with the ecosystem and the tokenomics. So I do recommend checking this out. Speaking of tokenomics, Ironclad Finance dropped a Twitter thread going through exactly how the airdrop is going to work. And it's a little bit different and more complex to how some of the more standard airdrops have worked. Aside from the fact that they're only dropping to the top 888 on the leaderboard, they're dropping an OICL token, which appears to be kind of like an option to purchase the actual liquid ICL token at a specific price. But if you hold the OICL token over time, then you get to share in a greater portion of the fees earned from the platform. And then the other important thing is that there's going to be a vesting schedule. So only 50% of the token is gonna drop immediately. And then there's going to be 25% one month later, and then another month after that, the final 25%. Okay, let's move now to talk about Renzo, because this is one of the biggest LRTs, liquid restake tokens, actually the second largest after EtherFi, and there's a couple of important pieces of information that came to light. So for starters, they raised a bunch of money, $17 million, which is definitely bullish for the future of the REZ token. But the other thing that's definitely bullish is that they finally enabled withdrawals. So this means that the peg from ETH and Easy ETH should return to the actual one-to-one -one part. Now, it's not quite actually back to where it should be. It's probably about one and a half percent still short of that. And the reason for that, I believe, is because there is a three-day withdrawal period on ETH mainnet when you want to actually unstake your Easy ETH. 
and this literally just went live. So I think that in three days time, people will probably have started to arbitrage this opportunity and then we'll actually see that peg close. So that is definitely bullish for people that are still holding on to Easy ETH, which I partially am because I was using it to farm airdrops anyways. And also I didn't want to take a massive haircut by selling it at like a 4% discount. Okay, moving now to the mode ecosystem and season two of their airdrop. So they've changed the way that you earn points a little bit. Previously, the best way to actually earn points and rank up for this airdrop was to hold assets and to use those assets in DeFi. But now they've really jacked up the amount of points that you can get from activity on the network. And there's 5 million points every single day based on transaction volumes across these specific protocols. So if you are still farming season two of the mode airdrop, this is now a way that you can move up the leaderboard. And this is a way that people with smaller stacks can do better than let's say whales that are probably a little bit more lazy when it comes to farming and just wanna park their money somewhere and rack up the points or the yield. Okay, two more quick pieces of alpha. We got the Mystico Network, which is dropping the XZK airdrop checker. So you can check and see how many points you're getting based on all of the activities you've previously completed. So I'll leave that down below. And then the final thing is that Week eight, where the last week of the Caldera Crusade campaign thing is finally here. So this looks like it will be the last one that you have to do. Collect this one final oat and then you will be done with this. So that is it for today's alpha. Hopefully you found this helpful as always. And I will be back tomorrow with more news on how the layer zero claim actually goes. Have a great day.